Hi everyone, welcome along to the studio today. I'm going to be looking at glue gun stamps. One of my very favorite things to use as texture with polymer clay. The reason I love it so much, simple, easy, cost effective, and you can create your own textures which are unique to you, which no one else in the world will have because it's created especially by you. So let me just have a look at, um, I don't think I need to run through the glue gun process. You simply turn on your glue gun and create a pattern on a stamp, but uh, sorry, a pattern on either a block of wood or some other substrate that is going to hold its shape and its form. Now let's just talk about that for a moment. Obviously little blocks of wood are fantastic because they're nice and sturdy and look the glue gun sticks to it really well. This is one I've had for about oh god 10 years maybe and it's perfect. It has been used over and over and over again and um, I'm sure I'm going to get lots more years out of this one. So blocks of wood come in really handy. Luckily, hubby's a builder, so I have little blocks of wood everywhere. But not everyone has access to blocks of wood. So what else could you use? You can use cardboard. You could use, this is just from a packet of biscuits, cracker biscuits. Um, you could use, this is a the back of a Christmas card that's just been cut up. So any sort of cardstock. Um, this is um, like a, a mount board. So this has worked really well. Um, I have tried other substrates as well. Acetate is one I thought would be fantastic because you can see through it but the glue gun actually simply peels off the acetate. So that's something that you're going to have to keep in mind. Um, look, to be honest, cardboard, it's the easiest one to use. Now let's talk about creating your stamp or your texture. It's a simple matter of working onto your uh, wood, cardboard, whatever you have, creating whatever design you want. So you can do simply the glue gun straight, sorry, the glue straight out of the gun, create a simple stamp, which is what these ones are. And this one is also, and you can see the beautiful organic texture that's created from them. So vary the way you use your glue gun, create some really heavy areas of texture. Let's look at this one. Some a little lighter, sorry, bring it into a shot there. Some a little lighter, so you can vary the, um, you know, the amount of clay that goes onto the surface. Sorry, the amount of glue that goes onto the surface. Let's have a look at these couple here because this one is actually, the glue has been um, uh, spread onto the cardboard and then I've textured back into the glue. So you can think about doing that kind of thing as well. You know, and just play around. I played around with a couple of things that failed completely, but you know, have a play around. It's really not going to cost you a huge amount of money. Um, and you can create some really nice textures. This was simply lines that I just uh, dragged back into and it created a really cool texture. So, um, and simply dots as well. So, you know, think about how you apply the glue to your stamp, create an impression. And if you don't like it, don't stress. It's really not that big of a drama, is it? You know, you're really not wasting that much. All right, so what I'm gonna show you now, that is pretty much, look, really simple. Simple, simple way to create a glue gun stamp. What I'm gonna show you now, I'm going to work with some clay. Um, this is just a nice um, maroon colored clay. I'm running through my pasta machine just on a number four setting, number one being the thickest. And I'm going to cut a bevel edge. I'm going to roll it up. I'm going to create a nice little roll there because I don't want air in here. I'm going to roll this up 
And I'm just going to cut a bevel edge there and I'm going to turn it into a ball of clay. Now this is quite firm clay, which is kind of nice. It's going to accept the um, texture really well. So let's just get it. Actually, I'll do a, um, a long piece like this. This will work. I'll just move this out of the way. So let's create this shape. Okay, so I've got a nice kind of log shape. We're working very organically today, so I don't need anything that's going to be super fancy, okay? Skewer through the middle. This is quite a large piece of clay, but that's okay. I'm gonna cut it down if I need to, but I'm actually going to shape it onto my skewer. So you can see I've made it a little bit of a rectangular shape here. Remember, I'm going for an organic look because I have very organic looking stamps. So this is probably some of the favorite, my, some of my favorite type of beads that I love to make look like this. <laughs> At the end of the video, I will share some of the beads I've made using my glue gun stamps. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. You know, it's nothing spectacular, but I'm going to show you, I'm gonna do another one of these and I'm gonna show you what else we can do. So this is simply going to be a glue gun stamp with texture on one side and texture on the top. So this is where we come in with some powder and we are going to just put a little bit of powder on here as a release agent and I'm simply using baby powder. This is my release agent of choice. I don't like to use water or oil or <laughs> any other type of release agent. Powder is my favorite. So I'm simply going to place this on the top and then I think I'm going to get, I might use this one. This might work quite well. So let's give this a bit of a brush. Now you don't want to apply, see that? Too much powder. So brush it around, sorry, blow off the excess and you, you really don't need, you just need a, a light coating of powder. I'm just going to brush, blow that off the top there. All right, so there we go. We've got that on the base. And I'm going to get this one and I'm going to position it on the top. And I'm simply going to press down and I'm rolling around as I go. This is the simplest way to create a really cool organic looking bead that you can then do so many things with or create so many variations. So if you look there, I've actually sandwiched this bead in between the texture. So let's pull the top one off. Gorgeous. And the base is like this. And look, we've got a beautiful um, kind of very organic edge to this. If you don't like that, that's okay. You can manipulate it. Okay, so let's reshape it just like that and because I'm using a fairly firm clay my reshaping means that my clay is not squishing in my hands it's kind of really accepting the reshaping quite well so now our skewer in the middle there means we have a thread hole down the middle of our bead if you can see that I'm sure you can so, and you can just manipulate that a little bit more if you want to. So that is one way you can create a really gorgeous bead. And I can see there are many, many, many ways I can vary this. I can work back into this with additional texture. I can color it with paint, mica powders, chalk pastels. I can use mylar on the surface. There are so many different ways I can vary that. But I'm going to show you uh, a gorgeous way to vary it simply by using some foils. Now, 
If you haven't seen my foils video, or there's a few videos actually in the series, if you haven't seen them, I would highly recommend you go and have a look. Even the first one is fine to look at. It's called Burnishing Foils. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. So it's just how to burnish foils to polymer clay. Now, when I'm talking about foils, I'm talking about this stuff. So this is actually mylar paper, which has a color attached to the underneath of the paper. So this actually has color and paper that get, gets ripped off the surface. So there are lots and lots of different foils on the market now. And um, some of them work well, some of them don't work as well, but there is always something that you can do with your foil. So don't be disheartened if you find it doesn't burnish like, um, you know, like the way my foils burnish in the very first burnishing video. All right, so we're back to this stage again. We're going to put our skewer in here and we're going to shape our bead up a little bit. Okay, so let's do, we'll just do the elongated shape again. I might make it a little bit longer this time. Okay, we'll just widen it up a bit. This is so fun doing the organic stuff because that could be my bead right there. I just kind of love it. You really, um, you really don't have to be perfect with organics if you're creating anything that's organic. All right, what I need to do now, I'm actually going to just flatten this up a little bit. So I want a flat surface here that my foil can stick to, all right? So let's just Press it down on the surface. I'll just give it a flatten this way because we want a nice flat surface that this can stick to. All right, so I'm going to position this onto my bead and I'm just going to burnish. First of all, I'm going to attach it and I'm just going to Grab my favorite burnishing tool, and this is an icing, you know, it's used in cake decorating. It's an icing or fondant smoother, I think it's called. So I'm simply going to burnish away. Sorry if I'm bumping the camera there. So this is a heat transfer product, and you need to apply heat or friction, certainly not heat from a heat gun, Although that is a whole other technique, which we won't get into now. So I'm just moving quickly. And the key to this is to rip like a band-aid. So fingers crossed and rip like a band-aid. We actually have a little bit transferred there, but not as much as I wanted. So let's just give it another try. And it could also be the, um, the shape of the bead that's not wanting to stick. So we'll just give it another try and we'll work with what we have. And that's going to do beautifully. So let's lift that up and we'll see what we've got there. So you can see that we've got some beautiful foils on the surface there. I don't really care if it hasn't gone around to this area here, that's okay by me. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, let's create a texture on the back of this as well. And we might go onto this one and let's create texture on the front. And I think we will just go this one again. I do really like this one. So we'll pull this in again. Sorry, I'm out of camera angle there, but I'm actually just putting a release agent on these. So let's get ready for this one. Put this one down here. We're going to press down, firm pressure, and release. And you can see that we have just gonna release it from the base. So we've got beautiful texture underneath. I love that stamp. It's one of my favorites, if you can see that. 
And we have this gorgeous texture on the front here, which I'm just going to pull in some sticky tape and I'm going to peel off some of the top texture, sorry, some of the top foils. And we have some gorgeous indentations with foils inside uh, the texture area. Absolutely gorgeous, love these. So just there with that very quick little demo there, we have two absolutely gorgeous beads, some gorgeous textural pieces that we can use for all sorts of other things, and amazing textural stamps that we can use forever and ever. So that's about it from the studio today. I really hope you enjoyed that one. And um, I would love to see what other variations you can come up with um, by using your glue gun stamps. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.